All right, time to continue our lovely adventure of Shion and her friendly ghost Satoshi. Let's go. <laughs> Keiichi didn't seem to understand the significance of the storehouse. He looked bored. Bored? You're gonna you're gonna be bored with these torture devices? Or eh, well, actually, you know, we see the background over here with the torture devices, but it may not be 100% um, portrayed the best. Like, maybe we're not in the room with torture devices yet, narratively speaking, even though we clearly see, like, the torture devices here. Because, you know, uh, we had that confusion with um, Shion protecting Satoshi from our lovely detective. Uh, even though we clearly see uh, Shion in her usual getup, even though at that point, she was still supposed to be disguised as uh, Mion, where we're supposed to see, like, Shion dressed as Mion at that point, protecting Satoshi, but no, it was clearly, uh, we've seen uh, Shion in her usual getup, and the explanation for that is, I guess people were lazy to <laughs> draw Mion version of that, they just left uh, the Shion one, similar to chapter 2, when uh, Shion protected Keiji. Takano-san. Noticed that and took out her scrapbooks to show him the brutal history of ancient Hinamasa. I'd heard that story already, so I decided to walk around by myself. Okay, good, good. Let's let's just uh, let's go through this. <laughs> we already went through the motion here. Since I knew the significance of all these tunes, I felt a little nauseated. Though they certainly wouldn't jump out to me, I still found them intimidating. They looked as if they were craving for fresh blood after not having been used in hundreds of years. All the tools looked similar to the ones I saw in the underground torture room at the Sonzaki main house. If those tools were the progenies of torture implements, these would be their ancestors. All the implements here looked old. I doubted they could really be used. They weren't kept maintained like the ones at the Sonzaki house. So, did that mean they shouldn't scare me? No. On the contrary, they told me that cruel rituals were indeed performed in this village at one point. Now that I found scary. What Takano-san told me was the truth. When I stopped, Satoshi-kun also stopped behind me, one step later. I felt no emotional change in Satoshi-kun. I couldn't tell if he was feeling something or not. I knew he was there, but I had no idea how he was feeling. I felt scared of him for the first time. If he could answer me, I'd want to ask him, Who demoned you away? Yes, <laughs> Satoshi-kun. I couldn't tell if he heard me or not. He left, as if he didn't hear anything. I could tell that he'd been sulky ever since we got here. And so he felt lonely, so I looked for him while walking around. I realized then that there was an altar in front of the statue. He might be there. It was a clean altar. An altar ornamented with religious artifacts. It was kept well maintained. I saw no dust. Really now? Hmm. I get the feeling that someone is visiting this place once in a while and is cleaning this stuff too. That would mean. well. The flowers in the vase weren't wilted. I saw a pretty handkerchief under the vase. It looked out of place amongst everything else. I was fairly certain it was Rika Furuda's handkerchief. That would mean... that the storehouse is maintained daily. Mm -hmm. Rika is taking care of this ritual storehouse. It wasn't a forgotten ruin buried in dust. So, the brutality that dwelled in this ritual storehouse is still alive and well in Amazon. And that's right. Something as ambiguous as Oyashiro Sama's curse is nothing more than a simple delusion of the villagers. As Takano-san said, everything that happens in this world 
is done by humans. I'd accused Oyashiro Sama of demoning away Satoshkin, but Oyashiro Sama is just. is just a statue made of bronze or wood. It's nothing but an icon. There are, however, human beings who would try to make that icon seem real. A series of mysterious deaths in Ozawa is the result of human action. It shouldn't be called Oyashiro Sama's curse. If Satoshikun was the fourth year's victim, then he was victimized by a human being who just was just acting the part of a curse. The person who demoned away Satoshikun must not be very far from me. Hmm. Almost as if they are very, very close to us. Possibly. Literally. Hmm. And the truth behind Satoshikun's disappearance was not so far from my grasp. Thump. I was startled by the sound. It sounded like somebody had dropped something. I looked away at Takano-san and Keiichi. Takano-san was still lecturing him. Did she drop her scrapbook or something? Alright, you kids, what are you guys doing? Thump, thump, thump. <laughs> oh. Oh shit. It's the sound. The sound that only Shion is hearing. The sound came from right behind me, not from them. I never heard Satoshi kun do that. It sounded like somebody was stomping on the floor in frustration. What is it? The sound continued, ignoring my question. Though I heard it right nearby, it sounded as though a child was hopping on a wooden floor somewhere distant. Again, you know, I was thinking that maybe it was uh, Satoko who who came here. I mean, all the, cl all the clues would lead towards her, like, like back in Chapter 2. She was off somewhere when we exited the... Um, and when we exited the, the ritual storehouse, we found her eventually. And we do know that uh, Satoko eventually, at some point in the past, uh, went inside through a hole in the ritual storehouse. So someone like her would know like a secret way of entering the storehouse. But no, apparently only Shion is hearing this. So now we... It brings you back to the idea that it's it's the curse. It's all in her mind. With that being said, though, stomping <laughs> again. It, it it brings me back to that uh, <laughs> that goofy little subject that I brought up. That for some reason, for each individual like Keiichi, Shion, uh, Arena, like. The curse of uh, Oyashiro is acting in different ways. For some, it's footsteps, and now for Shion, for some reason, it's stomping? And for Rena, Oyashiro decides to spook her, like, in her sleep at night, like, near the bed. Like, what the fuck? I couldn't read his expressions. I thought he was mad. But I didn't sense any emotion from him at all. Was he mad that I touched the altar? I mean, you know, I'm looking at it from a scientific way, you know, because of the because of the syringes, like the the curses and the cures, like yada 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 yada. But I guess if we were to think of it from a mystical standpoint and there is something out there, like a ghost or something, in similar fashion to Yumineko, like a presence that we would hear, there is certainly a character behind the person that is doing these actions, like following them, like hearing their footsteps, and now they're stomping in anger because we're basically entering their ritual storehouse. So, spiritually speaking, Oyashiro is... Uh, they're showing their character right over here. Even though, scientifically speaking, why is it that the human mind is hearing these stomps now, all of a sudden? 
and not the regular footsteps. Maybe you weren't supposed to do that. Well, actually, I'm being an idiot right over here. The human mind is very complex. Like, if we're talking about stress and being a part of this, like, each human brain re will react to different kinds of stimuli that would make you stressed. And I guess in this case, you'll be stomping for Xion. It's not that I've been able to communicate with Satoshi in a concrete way. I just talked to him. I was never expecting him to react like that. I didn't sense a willingness to communicate from, it, from this creepy sound. And then a chill ran up my spine. It felt as if all my pores were opening. I've been thinking that it was Satoshi stomping on the floor. Hey. You. You're Satoshi aren't you? The sound stopped when I asked that. It wasn't a yes or no, just silence. Satoshi couldn't want to scare me like that. Now, with that being said, whether we're thinking scientifically, like it's uh, like the human mind is creating these uh, sounds to spook the person that is affected by the soap opera curse. Or, spiritually speaking, we're talking about a Oyashiro right over here who's displaying their character. Is Oyashiro a child? Hmm. Like, if we were to include this into the character of Oyashiro, supposedly, is stomping. They are stomping like a child. Like, angry at uh, these people that are entering their ritual storehouse. Like, how dare you enter my ritual storehouse? This makes me mad! Yeah. I realized suddenly that the sound didn't come from Satoshka. A cold shiver shot through my feet, and I sprung a step backward. The sound had come from right there. You know, I jumped back. It was still just a few meters away. Satoshkun would sometimes let me hear his footsteps when I walked. But if that wasn't Satoshkun, then there was no guarantee I'd hear its footsteps. So that invisible being could already be right in front of my eyes. And I just would see it. I forgot everything and ran, straining my ears as much as possible for any sound, listening for any footsteps pursuing me. I ran right into Keiichi and clung to him, timidly turning back to look. The dimly lit area before the altar was quiet, like nothing was happening. But seeing that chilling dark stillness, realizing I was just in that space, made me even more frightened now. Keiichi made fun of me. Even though he looked horrified just a little while ago, he now looked satisfied to see me scared too. Hmm. Okay. I guess this time Shion decides to keep it hush hush. Because before, Shion was like, Keiji! Did you hear that? Those footsteps? But now uh, she's came in as strong, I guess. Hmm. Unless it's still gonna happen like later. But yeah, I don't know. You know, if it was just Takaro and Tomitake here with Shion, like, we cannot trust them. Honestly. I honestly cannot trust these motherfuckers. So if we were to tell them that we heard some sound and sounds and there will be like, sounds? No, I didn't hear like any sounds. I wouldn't trust them. But if Keiichi doesn't hear them? Hmm. I pretended to be fine, but I wasn't sure if I was able to hide my fear entirely. The footsteps were chasing. They were outside the illumination of the lantern as if they couldn't go into the light. The presence never left us, however. It followed us like a fourth member of the party. Sometimes it made a stomping sound as if wanting some recognition. But neither Takano-san nor Keiichi 
seemed to notice it. It was possible for Takano-san to be ignoring it. But Keiichi would never ignore it. If he could hear it, he would have said something. Exactly. So, just like with Satoshi-kun, only I could hear it. What was this thing that was making me so scared? Was the Satoshi-kun in a bad mood? Or was it possible that the presence I believed to be Satoshi-kun might not have been him at all? Oh, again. What are you upset about, Satoshi-kun? Tell me if I did something wrong. I'll, I'll apologize. Thump, thump. If you aren't Satoshi-kun, then where did he go? When did he take his place? Unless this is not done in anger. Maybe Oyashiro is trying to send like a message through this. Bam, bam, bam. Morse code? Does Oyashiro know Morse code? I don't think that Morse code is something that is transferred from generation to generation in Japan from ancient times. I, I don't think that... The Morse code is something that existed since the ancient times, since the early days of Japan and all that. So I don't know, I don't know how to feel about Oyashiro knowing Morse code of all things. Unless it's a real person. Hmm. But no, if we're talking about something spiritually going on right over here, Morse code would surely not be it. So. But still, they might be sending a message with this, but what it would be, I have no idea. Shio, はい。全然平気ですよ。それより<笑> to engage in the conversation to have myself ignore the sound from behind. I didn't hear the sound as much. Yeah, it became a bit more distant. Yeah. I shouldn't pay attention to it. It wouldn't bother me if I didn't hear it. I should just ignore the noise. De, Takano-san was on the first one, but I was on the first one, and I was on the first one, and I was on the first one. So, I was on the first one. This is the first one, and I was on the first one. シオンちゃんは理解のある人だから話したけど、他の村人には聞かれたくないの。下手をしたら罰当たりものってことで袋叩きにされかねないんだから。She smiled at me like a witch. 前原君も内緒にしてね。知られたら私、親城様のたたりに会うか、生贄にされちゃうかするかもしれない。たたりなら、今年はどんな死に方をさせられちゃうのかしら。生贄なら、鬼が淵の沼に生きたまま沈められちゃうのかしら。そういえば、今夜よね。親城様のたたりがある夜は。certainly is. If the car strikes for the fifth time, it will happen tonight. Takano-san pulled out an old scrapbook from a paper bag and started turning the pages. She opened it to the page with that one article. It was the article about the brutal murder of a Watanagashi victim. It happened in the Meiji era. This is a real story. In the Meiji era, the Oni-ga-fuchi-mura de Mimoto-fumei no zansatsu-shitai ga hakken sareta in desu. Te... 核も無残かつ残虐非道を Okay, well, this may be something new here. Will you keep it quiet there? Hey. You guys seriously don't hear that? It's freaking loud. How can you not hear it? Ah, uh, hell. It's freaking noisy. Cut it out already. 
and next moment we all heard a squeaking noise. Uh huh? We turned around in surprise. Okay, we all heard that. Oh. You motherfucker. He was just Tommy Takasan opening the door. あら、次郎さんも見たくて我慢できなくなったかしら。ここ、素敵な拷問道具の宝庫よ。僕は遠慮させてもらうよ。世代ね、こういうのは苦手なんだ。高野さん laughed as if making fun of Tomitake-san for being such a scared cat. それより、演舞とセレモニーが終わって、みんな沢の方に降りていったよ。Time was up. I never expected that Tomitake-san would save me from this nightmare. His face suddenly looked heroic. うん。ケイチ君も出るかい？もう十分に見ましたので、シオン、もういいだろう。出ようぜ。綺麗な空気が吸いたいよ。どうかんです。出ましょう。I went into the entry room and turned around. Takano-san was taking photos in a mad rush, though our time was up. I didn't hear that sound anymore. I didn't feel that presence. I didn't feel Satoshi-kun either. But somehow, I wasn't too sad about that. Even if he followed me out here, I wouldn't be able to tell if it was really him or somebody else. Alrighty then. Notebook page 172, 173, and 179. Oh, it is good that we're still writing in the notebook right over here. That underground torture room is officially called the Underground Ritual Storehouse. So, do torture room and ritual storehouse mean the same thing? According to Takano-san's theory, bloody rituals, including Watanagashi, have been passed down among the three families even after the Meiji era. The rituals are always ready to be performed. Their form of worship always revolved around torture. So Hinamazawa's history involved a great deal of human slaughter. Takano-san's theory is correct. The underground storehouse at the Sonsaki house looked well maintained. Takano-san is right about that too. Since the Sonsaki family and the Fugida family both have ritual storehouses, the Kimiyoshi family must have one too. After all, these ancient and brutal customs are still handed down through the generations. I should remain armed with the knowledge that our cold events are still secretly being performed in this cursed village. Actually, you know what? That's a very good point. If the Sonazakis and um, and uh, the Furudas have their own like uh, torture places, maybe the Kimiyoshi family have one too. We haven't really delved much into the Kimiyoshi family. Hell, like out of all the three families, Kimiyoshis seem like the most normal. Mostly because we don't really see the religious side of the Kimiyoshi family. Mostly just the food and, um, and the Sonozakis with their history with uh, the tortures and such. As for the Kimiyoshis? I don't even know where their buildings are, like where their places is. The most that I connect with is the, like, the whole center place. But anyway. The sanctity of the ritual storehouse is one of the most prominent elements in the worship of Oyashiro sama Of course, I knew that, since I'm originally from Hinozawa. But violating that sanctity is actually a more serious problem than I thought. Takano-san's research shows that the history of the ritual storehouse goes way, way back. The ritual implements within have long been viewed as inviolable objects, which is why it was strictly forbidden to enter. Takano-san series says that Watanagashi was once a public execution, performed to stabilize the reign of the three families, rather than a purely religious ritual. 
Yeah, I can imagine. If so, the ritual should hardly be called sacred. It's a power move in like the ancient times for sure. To show everybody, hey, you do this forbidden thing, you will be punished just like this person. As of now though, they are mostly done in secrecy. Under those circumstances, the implements should have been despised as symbols of hatred and fear. When instruments of fear are too visible, they only create a reign of terror. But keep them as soon as possible and they gain divinity. Many said they would become tainted if they if the layman touched them. And the only reason for that was to preserve their false prestige for secrecy, since they would lose their sanctity if revealed before the common folk. In other words, the true identity of the ritual storehouse's sacredness was fear. That was the true emotion ruling over this village. Okay. The reason why Takano-san and Tomitake-san were cursed is because they broke into the ritual storehouse. I don't know how the villagers found out about it. Maybe somebody was watching. Maybe there was an anti-theft alarm. Either way, my intrusion must have been reported to the highest level of the curse system. That's because, considering the distance between the village and the site where Takano-san's body was found, she must have been killed right after we came out of the ritual storehouse. was done very quickly. It's possible that a special assassination team exists for this purpose, or that the plan had been set up a long time ago. They might have been secret against they might have been secret agents of the Sonazaki family, but the latter sounds more valid. But if so, who would have been the victim if nobody broke into the ritual stars? It is a valid question. In my opinion, it would have happened anyway. But yeah, who would have funk it? We've done the ritual storehouse um, a moment once again, just like in chapter 2. And uh, Takano-san and uh, Tomitake-san just left and they died, just like usual. And we're not gonna steal them until the next chapter once again. Oh. Yeah, typical. Just entered stage from right, all secrecy, do their thing, and the next thing you know it, they just exit stage left, and we're not gonna see them until the next chapter. Just like usual. Those motherfuckers. My relatives gathered at the Sonsaki house after the festival to have a little party. I mingled with my uncles and had fun. I was trying to get rid of my eerie memories of the ritual storehouse. Mion was acting as a successor, so I tried to stay away from her. I'm sure she would feel weird if I talked to her in a formal way. In consideration of the old hag's old age, we ended the party around 11 p.m. We all helped to clean up, with the women washing the dishes in the kitchen, and the men folding the tables and putting them away in the storeroom. It only took about 30 minutes. And then everyone left, one after another. By then, Mion was no longer acting as the Sonzaki's successor, and was back to being her normal self. Good. Maybe I overexerted a little. I was lying on the tatami floor. Kasai asked me if I could get in the car, so I told him I'd rather not move anymore. Carry me! Carry me like a princess, please. <laughs> that's... I get a feeling that that's surely something that Sean would do in this instance. Or that. Mmm... あんたの学校開校記念日って年に何回あるわけ? <laughs> 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 
ではよろしくお願いいたしますバイカサイほらシオン起きてここで寝てるとバッチャに怒られるってほら肩を貸すから奥に行こう私の布団貸してあげるからアリリーおねーマイルターイゴトミー、ダレムンのデムストマク。I would never woken up if I hadn't heard that voice. But when I stop, he always walks one extra step. I might not have woken up at all. I didn't remember much after that. I was probably brought to Mion's room and immediately crawled into the futon. After a while, Mion got her food on ready next to me, turned the lights off, and went to sleep. At least, that's what I thought. I got up and turned the lights on. Mion's futon was empty. The futon felt cold. Mion must have left it a while ago. Did she go to the bathroom? No. The closest bathroom was right there down the hallway. The light in the bathroom was off. Where did she go? The ticking of the clock was loud and annoying in the silence. The hands pointed to a little before 3 a.m. I was left alone all of a sudden in this late night. I felt the eeriness of the virtual storehouse coming back to me after almost managing to forget it in the rock of s u r r e r I tried to sense my surroundings. In this house, there shouldn't be an eerie atmosphere, strange noises, or footsteps. I stepped out into the freezing cold hallway to look for Mion. Mion? When I did, I immediately noticed light coming from one of the nearby rooms. That room belonged to the hag. The hag went to sleep early and woke up early. She was very strict about her bedtime. So it was strange to see her light on in the middle of the night. I could hear voices too.、And、those voices belong to the hag and Mion. Yeah, they're more than likely talking about the curses and like, like people that died right now. I crept up to the room and listened to the conversation. All right, let's do some snooping right over here. Let's,、uh, let's see if we can learn something new here. Since it was the middle of the night, I could hear their words very clearly. しゃあもねえやんな。あんの赤いのもちょいでばりすぎやったんや。まあね、おやしろ様のお怒りに触れたんだから、仕方ないしね。Mion's voice sounded as cold as the one I'd heard down in the torture. I held my breath. 警察は調べとっちゅうとろんが、すっとろん間違いなかんね。たぶんね。My heart almost stopped. We are sure Sama. I got angry. The police are investigating. It's probably Takano san. And what day was it today? Those words told me that something was happening. My feet started to chatter. I desperately tried to stop them. I felt like my body was swelling up so I could no longer hear as well. Calm down. Breathe. Listen more carefully. According to Mion and the Hag's conversation, another incident definitely took place. The victims were Takano san and Tomitake san. From what I could tell, both Mion and the Hag thought it made sense that whatever it was happened to them. No. No, 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 no. I need to think more c a l l m e They did say they deserted for making Oyashiro Sama angry. Did they say Takano san and Tomitake san made Oyashiro Sama angry? How did they make Oyashiro Sama angry? They knew. My body started to shake. They knew we snuck into the virtual storehouse. Then, would that mean Keiichi and I were also subject to Oyashiro Sama's curse? Suddenly, a phone rang. The phone was by the front door. The front door was opposite the hag's room, farther down the hall. 
The ringing echoed throughout the hall, the long hallway. Sound so eerie, almost like it was coming from hell. That was when I felt someone behind me. Of course, there was nobody there when I turned around, but there was someone there a moment ago. I didn't know if it was Satoshi-kun. I didn't sense any emotions, so I couldn't tell. I also didn't know how long it had been there. It was as if that somebody was watching me, listening on their conversation. That was the feeling I got. It couldn't possibly be Satoshka. Satoshka would never be that intimidating or scary. Yeah, I mean, have you seen him <laughs> in this chapter? Him scary? Yeah. My mind turned all red, like it was suffused with blood. Mita ni wa nai. あ、ひたひたと。I remembered what Renaryuku had said on that rainy day. Okay, it's just you remembering that. It's not as if Rena decided to talk like right behind you. I mean, Jesus. That would have been scary. If Oyashiro-sama wasn't angry, nobody would fall. So what did this mean? Ever since we snuck into the shrine store, something has been following me? What is it? Calm down. Calm down. That's right. Rena wasn't talking about me. She was talking about Satoshi-kun. That's what happened to Satoshi-kun. That's right. That's why he encountered a curse of Oyashiro-sama. A creepy feeling crawled up and spread across my back. Someone I swore loudly. It's almost as though Rena Ryuge was predicting what would happen to me. Yeah, apparently he has a neck for that kind of stuff, I guess. Had Rena been talking about Satoshi-kun back then? Or had she actually been talking about me? そして、お布団に入って明かりを消しても、ずっと枕元から見下ろしてるの。ただただ黙って。じっと。I knew by now that there was no mistake. No matter how I looked at it, she had been talking about me. Yes, me. Yeah, I've been about me. The curse of Yashiro-sama. What is the curse of Yashiro-sama? And that was when I actually felt something for real. Someone grabbed my collar. <laughs> no voice came out. I wanted to scream, but all I could do was to open and close my mouth, as if something was stuck in my throat. It was Mion. Hi there, Mion. Don't mind us, we were just going to the kitchen and grab some milk. She looked even colder than how she looked in the ground underground torture room. It only made sense. Then she come out into the hallway to answer the phone. I tried to come up with an excuse. However, the way Mion looked at me was so cold. Even if I really had run into her by accident, I could tell by the look in her eyes that she wouldn't believe me. Felt cold sweat all over my body. I couldn't even move my fingers. Go, go I apologized. I could have said something to get myself out of this situation, but the apology came out first. But Mion didn't appear to hear me. She walked to the front door, still holding my collar. Oh, oh god. The phone was still ringing. 
A normal person doesn't usually let a phone ring so long at this time of night. The phone call itself didn't seem real to me. Mion picked up the phone. Mion desu. Hmm. So desu ka. Wakarimashita. So chira no taiyo wa yoroshiko o negai shimasu. Sore kara. Issai no kuchi fuji o yoroshiko o negai shimasu. Eh. Dewa. Jesus Christ. You know, when you turn into this figurehead mode, you really sound like a. Uh, like Oreo, for sure. I honestly don't like that. Mion put down the phone after a short conversation. What does she mean? Make sure nobody talks about this. Who called any way? Mion put her forehead to mine and spoke to me. Oh. Kiteta. Which which conversation was she asking me about? She had to be talking about the one with the hack. If I said yes, what would happen to me? <laughs> Mion pulled my collar, pressed her nose on mine, and continued to speak. He was like I was talking to myself in the mirror. But what I was saying in the mirror was ever so cold. お姉。お、やしろ様の祟りって何です。富武さんは自らの手で喉をかきむしってお亡くなりになりました。高野さんは遠くの山奥でドラム缶に詰められて焼き殺されたそうで実に沖の毒です。Tomitake-san clawed at his own throat until he died. What? Takano-san was burned to death in an oil drum? What? What? Felt something furry crawl up my spine. I also felt like my stomach was turning upside down. I didn't feel any strength in my legs. If Mion let go of my collar, I'd probably collapse on the spot. I'm asking you because I don't know. Please don't talk as if I already know the answer. My heart was pounding. I felt that my next breath would be so bloody and hot that I'd choke on it. It it's because they made Oyashiro Sama angry. The first year, he was the manager of the Dan construction site. In the second year, he was the traitors to the village. The third year, he was the pacifist. The fourth year, he was the relatives of the traitors. I always thought the victims were people who had something to do with the damn conflict. Since I didn't do anything against the village during the damn conflict, I assumed I was safe. I should have known. I should have known everything would be the curse of Oyashiro Sama. I knew Oyashiro-sama's anger was the curse of Oyashiro-sama. I knew Oyashiro-sama would get angry if I snuck into the ritual storehouse. But since I wasn't held responsible in any way for the damn conflict, I never thought I would be a victim of the curse. Did I ever think there would be an instant in the fifth year? Did I ever think that I'd be the victim of the fifth year instant? Tomitake-san snuck into the storehouse. And he clawed at his own throat until he died. Takano-san was burned to death in an oil drum. It must be a lie. It couldn't be true. Even if it was forbidden, it was just a space for storing some old tortured implements. How could they be killed for just sneaking in there? Especially in such gruesome ways. 
but I thought about it again and realized that those people were absolutely capable of doing things like that. The main Sonsaki family was capable of it. The Sonsaki family had been pulling the strings behind the scenes of mysterious deaths. They could do it. The Sonsaki family even kidnapped the grandson of the Minister of Construction during the day in conflict. They could do it. The Sonsaki family made Satoshkun disappear completely. They could do it. Okay, well that, I do not believe. As I said, if Mion says that the Sonzaki had nothing to do with it, then they had nothing to do with it. I still believe that there is some secret entity out there. Mion leaned against me before falling onto the cold hallway floor. Although, it doesn't necessarily mean that Shiona is going to think the same way as I do. She is more than likely going to think that the Sonzakis are responsible for everything. She collapsed rather violently. I usually didn't go to sleep with my stun gun, but since I was too tired and sleepy to get ready for bed, I still had it on me. I had my stun gun on me. I finally understood. I didn't know who killed him exactly, whose idea it was, what, whose idea it was or who ordered it. I didn't even know who was actually involved, but Mion at the hack knew everything. Satoshka. Now I finally know. Now I know what I need to do. I will settle the score for you, Satoshkun. I will avenge you, Satoshkun. I won't be killed like you, Satoshkun. I walked into the hag's room. She was sitting up to take some medicine. Her back was turned to me. Oh? Oh, God. Mion and I are twins. If I acted like her, the hag wouldn't notice the difference. I didn't think she ever suspected me. I put my stun gun to her neck and pulled the trigger. I heard an indescribable electric sound, and the hag's lights went out. Oh boy. Well, it begins. She fell in a twisted position. I didn't know how long it would take a person to regain their freedom of movement after getting knocked out with a stun gun. So I had to restrain them before they walked back up. I was unbelievably calm. The key to the underground torture room was in the forbidden drawer that only the head of the family can access. Mion had told me about this once. I'd never looked for the drawer before, but I found it exactly where I thought it. The key was on a keychain with several of its sisters. Each key had a little plaque on it that said what it was used for. They were all in Mion's handwriting. She was an idiot for being so conscientious, but it sure helped me out. I put the keychain in my pocket and headed to the outdoor storeroom to find a card. I found a large flashlight there as well. There was a strap on the flashlight so I could put it on my shoulder. That way, I'd have both hands free to carry me on in the hack. Alright. I loaded Mion and then our grandmother onto the cart and carried them to the underground torture room. I was prepared to use a stun gun again if they woke up while I was working. But it was more powerful than I imagined and the hack showed no signs of waking. And this was the stun gun Kasai especially ordered for me when I told him I wanted a powerful one. I remembered him telling me that it was an illegally modified stun gun and that I should never use it just for fun. Well, she's surely not using it for fun either. In this, I used my flashlight to find the light switch. I found it easily and turned it on. All the lights went on in the basement. Although there was no illumination, it was very dim. I moved quickly as so as to finish what I needed to do before they woke up. I decided to put Mion in a cell beyond the torture room. The lights in the torture room were so bright that it was like daylight. 
there was a door there. I was very certain that the cells were on the other side of that door. The proper key was here. The keys made a tingling sound. I felt cold air coming in through the gap in the door. There must be a huge opening on the other side. I opened the door and I saw nothing but darkness. I felt along the wall to find a light switch. I turned the switch on and the light bulbs lit up, revealing a huge rocky cave. Well, here we are again. It didn't look like a natural cave. It looked more like an air raid shelter. There were several hollow openings with bars across them. Those were the cells. I walked up to the closest cell and checked to see if he was strong enough to confine her. I pushed and pulled on the bars. I rammed against them with all my weight and decided they were perfectly sturdy. And this was secure enough to be called a cell. I opened the lock and carried me on in. I wasn't particularly strong, just average. I never thought I was strong enough to carry a whole person. But now I didn't need to pretend to be weak. I could easily lift and drag their bodies. I put Mion in the cell. She seemed to moan a little. I didn't need to check to make sure. The effect on my stun gun was wearing off. I closed the bars and turned the key in the lock. Then I ran to the hack, who must have been starting to wake up too. Fortunately, there was no sign of her regaining consciousness. Maybe the difference in age had something to do with it. I looked for a table to strain her on. Oh! Oh god. Whew, this is gonna be this is gonna be something. I found a wheelchair with restraints for the hands and feet. I put the hack in it. Of course, she didn't resist, but her dead weight made it seem like she was a huge French doll, but one made of flesh. I put her hands on the armrests and restrained them at the wrists with the metal rings and hinges. I did the same with her feet. It must, must have been a wheelchair specially remodeled to restrain a person. Other than the restraints, it was a regular wheelchair. I waited for a hack to wake up. I had so many things I wanted to ask her. I didn't think she'd answer honestly, but I had plenty of tools to make her talk. I was in no rush. When the hack had a concern, relatives took care of the problem. That was how it worked in the Sonazaki family. She was the leader of the family, so all the information they gathered would make its way to her. She must know everything that happened in Imasawa, including the curse of Oyashiro-sama. I heard a noise from the cell. Mion must have woken up before the hack did. Speaking of the hack, she didn't seem like she was about to wake up anytime soon but she was restrained even if she did, so I had no need to fear. I left the hack there and headed for the cell. Alright, well, let's have some heart-to-heart -to -heart talk with Mion right now. Maybe we're gonna learn something from this, something new. Sion, this She talked like the successor. But she also sounded frightened. She obviously understood the situation she was in right now. おはよう、ミオン。まさか自分が閉じ込められることになるとは思わなかった。その崎家当主代行として命じます。ここを開けなさい。ここを開けなさい。<笑> <laughs> there was nothing funny about it. 
but I wanted to intimidate Neil. My laughter echoed throughout the cave. It was artificial and meaningless laughter. I heard it over and over as it echoed. It sounded as if I wasn't the only one laughing. I couldn't stand it, so I stopped. Silence filled the air. That silence almost hurt my eyes, so I started to speak. Tomitake-san and Takano-san are not going to be a year of the year. I didn't think so. 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 まあの人はそういう死に方を自分で希望してたっぽいからね結構満足してるかもよ<笑>ミオン didn't say anything She just stared at me to see how I would proceed 富武さんの自分で自分の喉を引き裂いたってのは何狂気に駆り立てるような怪しいお薬でも注射したのそれともそういう死に方に見せるような拷問道具でもあるわけミオン didn't reply I was smiling boldly but I became impatient and finally kicked the bars it made a violent noise ミオン jumped as if she was kicked directly 返事がないと退屈です私を怒らせるとどんな得があ、私が知るわけないでしょう。ミオン finally replied。She was odious, but at the same time sounded pitiful。ねえ、ミオン。次期当主様。ここまで来ちゃったんだから教えてくださいな。えー、っと。I had just too many things I wanted to ask her. I wanted to ask her about me, about the incident, about the curse, about Satoshka. I didn't even know where to start. Before I asked her about those, I asked her one other thing. 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 Glared at me suddenly. Because we were twins, I knew that was just a bluff. もうここまでやっちゃった以上、私も引っ込みがつかないんで。お姉も、私に容赦とか躊躇とか、そういうものをあまり期待しない方がいいかもです。ミオン must have been feeling a cold sweat on her face. Although the light was dim, I could tell that she was frightened. じゃあ聞くよ。ひなみざわ村連続開始事件通称おやしろ様のたたりこれってどういう意味があるのやっぱりダム戦争のけじめってやつ私はうん多分そうだと思ってるニョンサンデロー confused But she answered. I felt satisfaction now that we were communicating. And continued with a smile. I thought that was a little bit of a problem. I didn't know what was going on. 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 Yeah, right. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't 次期当主様の役目でしょ取り次ぎに過ぎないなんて信じると思ういつも身近にいる私だってたまにバッチャが何を考えてるのかわからない時があるもん何でもかんでも私が理解してるわけじゃないじゃあ親城様のたたりってのはあいつが全部独断で決めてるわけなんだ次期当主様と相談して決めてるのかと思ったよやばい話は全部バッチャが一人で決めてる私なんか預かり知る余地もないでもばあさんの独断だとしたって
あいつはあんたを返してやり取りしてるわけでしょそのあんたが何も知らないなんてあるはず違うよ私なんかを返していない私にだってよくわからないんだけど私が陽の部分を取り継いでるとしたら陰の部分を取り継いでる誰かがいると思う誰その影の部分の取り継ぎって知らない誰かを招いて話してるとことか電話をしているとことか見たことない強いて言えば毎年親城様のたたりの時期になると連絡量がどっと増える相手ねわかんない心当たりなんかないよまあいいやじゃあ質問を変えるね今年のたたりの富武さんと高野さんはダム戦争に直接関係してないのになぜ犠牲に選ばれたのやっぱり西宮殿に忍び込んだから As soon as Mion heard the words ritual storehouse, her expression shifted. Saigu den ni? Fulte jinja no Saigu den oka shita no? Ariya. Shitte ると ba kari. So nna koto o shita ra. Baka. Tousen da yo. Mion muttered bitterly while shaking her head repeatedly. Nyon's reaction made me realize the true meaning of the forbidden storehouse for Rachel's implements. The Rachel storehouse is a sacred building, so nobody can go inside. The curse will fall upon any who disobey. Any child would know their rule. However, just because they knew about it didn't mean that they all believed in it. Although they were told they would be cursed, most of the kids actually enjoyed hearing the stories. They simply didn't believe it was true. However, Mion's reaction told me it absolutely was. If they actually did that, of course something would happen to them. She was saying that if someone snuck into the ritual storehouse, that person should be killed. サイグデンがうかつに入っちゃやばいとこだってのは知ってますけどあんな死に方しても当然だってほどやばいとは思わないんだけど私たちだってその程度の認識じゃなかったでしたっけそれはシオンがよく知らないだけだよすみませんねよく知らなくて説明をいただいてもよろしいですかそりゃシオンの言う通り子供の世界では、やばいとか、たたりがあるとか言ったって。どうせ迷信に過ぎないだろう。でも大人にバレたらかなり怒られるんだろうなって、程度の認識だと思う。でもね、ひなみざわの子老たちにとっては、そんな甘いものじゃないの。Okay。Mion explained to me how the elderly people blindly believe no Ashiro s a m a And how sacred the festivals are to them. It's probably something the younger generations would never understand. But they are possessed by a very strong, deeply rooted devotion towards Oishiro sama. Neon then went on to tell me about how sinful it was to violate the rules of the ritual storehouse. I just couldn't believe things like that were still going on even in the modern day. I couldn't even reply appropriately. But even if it was unbelievable, I couldn't ignore what I was hearing from my twin sister. なるほどね。でもさ、ミオン。たたりで一人が死んだら、それを総裁する意味で一人を生贄にするのがルールじゃなかったっけ。生贄の死体は出ない。なのに今回は二人とも死体が出ちゃってるんだけど。そのあたりはどう見るミオン doesn't know that besides Takano san to Mitake san. Keiichi and I also snuck into the ritual storehouse. So I tried to lead her a little. Tashikani, Okashine. Takano san no shou shitai wa mitzkatcha ike na katta te koto na no ka na. Honto wa Takano san wa shisso te koto ni naru no ga perfect da ta no ka na. Arui wa. Hmm. Jishin wa nai ke do. Nani? 根拠なんかいらないから言ってみてよ。怒らないから
Mion hesitated a little first, and then started to speak. Alright. I guess so. Mion's words were stuck in my head. If those two dead bodies were the result of the curse, then there should be two sacrifices to call my Ashiro Sama's anger. Also, I love how comfortable we, how com I love how comfortable we got into com into talking about this Oyashiro stuff like right away, as soon as Mion realized that she is in a cell. No anger, no, not being scared. Just all right, Shion. What is it that you want? Let's just discuss this, just like that. What the fuck? The four of us snuck into the shrine store together. It was a simple equation. Did that mean that Keiichi and I were in danger? <sighs> what, 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 is, what is this Oyashiro? Oyashiro's uh, sudden hidden math equation right over here. Well, before it was all one must be uh, one must be killed and the other must be demoned away. And now we have like. Two killed and two demoned away? Where is this coming from? I got drunk, fell asleep, and decided to stay overnight. Was that because of the alcohol? Or did someone put a drug in my drink? It's not like me to get drunk and spend the night at the Hag's house. I wanted to forget about what happened at Yui's storehouse. So I drank too much. But it really was strange for me to get that drunk. Maybe it was a good thing I woke up in the middle of the night. I could have been the one to wake up in a cell. Sometimes it's hard to organize danger when you avoid it accidentally. A part of me wanted to just laugh at the idea, but another part felt frightened that I was so close to being in Mion's position. If my thinking was correct, I wonder how Keiichi Maibara was doing right now. I didn't see him in any of the cells, but that didn't guarantee his safety. Takano-san and Tometake-san had been executed. There was a possibility that Keiichi could already be dead, but just like what happened to Satoshi-kun, it might only happen after a few days. And when the sun rose, I was going to pretend to be Mion and head to our school. I was going to check if Keiichi Maibara was safe. If I already disappeared, the enemy would come after me next. I'd have to be a decoy for myself, but if he was still safe, I need to keep my eyes on him. I was sure the enemy would come after that scatterbrain. If I became Mion, Shion would disappear. The enemy would think Shion had already been demoned away, and they'd concentrate on Keiichi. If nothing happened to Keiichi, that would also be fine. It would prove that nothing would happen to me either. The hag was still sleeping in the wheelchair. I was going to interrogate her, but actually, I wasn't expecting to learn that much. Eh, to be honest, it's not like we learned like much from Mion to begin with. She is being her figurehead self, I guess. The woman who was also known as Empress Sonzaki probably wouldn't say a thing even if your fingers were cut off. Mion, her successor, was the complete opposite. She spoke readily, but didn't know too much about anything. Mion had said she was only a messenger, and that someone else was taking care of problems on the underside. It was possible Mion had grown to be a good liar, and that she tried to deceive me with a straight face. But at the same time, I could see the hag not letting Mion get involved in the other side of the village. If I were her, I wouldn't have used Mion for that either. Unlike me, Mion was a nice person. 
While there were only ones and zeros in the world, she believed there were numbers with decimal points. In other words, she could never be cruel. If the hag fought the same way as I do, it was very possible. The one who took care of the problems on the other side, X, was the one who actually governed the curse of Oya Shiro-sama. Person X! If the hag became concerned about something, X would deal with it, either directly or indirectly. Or maybe the hag and X would discuss the details first. But did X really exist? I do think so, yes. If it did, his place in the village hierarchy was a lot more important than that of the successor. Eh. I don't know if we're... I don't know if we can say for sure that they are a part of the hierarchy, if, we're, if we, they are even a part of him as well to begin with, but I guess we shall see. Unlike Mion, who was too nice. He was discreet, cruel, and cunning. Furthermore, he was extremely close to the hack. Someone who would have a lot of contact with her just before it was time for the curse. Because of the way Tomitake-san died, it could be someone who regularly dealt with unusual drugs. He could be a member of a medical institution. The director of the EDA clinic. EDA? Mm -hmm. In this eyesight of the village, EDA was famous for opening such a beautiful clinic and for working so hard for the villagers' sake. The villagers liked his mature personality and really respected him. There's nothing scarier than a doctor who's also a murderer. If Elia was the person behind the curse, all the mysterious deaths could be explained. However, there was only a slim chance of Elia being X. The main reason being that the hag wouldn't trust him. Like many of the elderly, the hag doesn't like young people. I knew she'd never trust him because of his age. Well, as I said, it doesn't have to, have to be someone of high of high position in the hierarchy of the Sonozakis or anything like that. It could very well be possible that somebody else entirely different from the Sonozakis and Hinamazawa to be doing all these murders like every single year. And it's just that the Hag and the Sonozakis in general are hiding behind these, like secretly trying to give off the impression that they are the ones in power with Doyashiro curse, like trying to make everyone think that it's the Oyashiro curse for some like for some reason, like staying in power or something like that. And they're using this ex person slash ex organization to give off that impression of power and such. So maybe. Even though they are like not connected to X to begin with. They are just using these as if it's like waiting for the rain to happen so that it, it would water your crops. Like, you don't have control of that, but you are using it to your advantage. Furthermore, she had openly criticized his behavior among the relatives once. Although Iria was famous, he was an outsider after all. He wasn't born here. He tried to maintain a good relationship with the villagers as the director of the clinic, but that was just on the surface. I couldn't even imagine the hag telling him about her worries, or about the villagers' underside. If she was as suspicious of others as I was, then she only gathered trustworthy people to deal with that underside. The first people that came to mind were the leaders of the three families. Leaving Rika Chan, leaving Rika Chama out, the head of the Kimiyoshi family was a strong possibility. He was the only one who could advise Empress Sonzaki. They were of a similar age, and everyone knew that they were very close outside the family councils. True. Furthermore, as the mayor, he often went to the Sonzaki house just before Watanagashi to discuss festival preparations. I could easily picture them talking privately. The one who executed the curse of Oyashiro-sama. The one who murdered Takano-san and Tomitake-san. 
the mastermind behind the series of the mysterious deaths that had been going for the past five years. Was he coming after me? Did he get to Satoshkun? When I thought about Satoshkun, I felt elevated. I was fearful of possibility being this year's victim until just a moment ago. I was scared that X was after me, but when I thought about it, I realized, whoever it was, this person had gotten Satoshkun. And it looked so hard, but I couldn't find him. I'd almost forgotten about this enemy. For better or for worse, he was going to appear before me again. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't find that enemy. But now, he was trying to find me. That was it. I wasn't only being chased, I was chasing too. When I realized all this, I was only afraid of dying to the fifth year's curse. It had become a game. I was only being friend. I was threatening too. Oh boy. 1,500 seconds until the end of this game. Now was the time to sell the score for Satoshk. Now was the time to awaken passions that had grown weak over the past year. I could feel righteous indignation and courage flare up within me. Alright, well, I guess so. Detective Xion is on the case once more. After she lost her motivation like last year. It's just that we're going to be doing our detective uh, work here in a very uh, disturbing way. The only emotion that can defeat fear is anger. When my anger completely overtook my fear, I felt as if I were already born. Onibaba-sama, soro-soro me o samashite kudasai masen? I kicked her wheelchair rather violently. But that didn't wake her, wake her up either. Yottoshite, nemutta furi o shite yari sugoso to ka kangaite masen? I grabbed her hair and pulled her head up. But even then, the axe still stays silent with a straight face. Then I noticed something. I looked for an appropriate torture device. They were all large scale, none of them being particularly handy. That's when I saw a cigarette lighter on a cushion in the tatami room. One of the relatives must have left it there. I lit the lighter. A huge flame appeared. I turned the lighter off and went back to the hagrid. I lit it in front of her eyes. There was still no response. I put the flame right under her nose without hesitation. The tip of the flame touched the tip of her nose. The flame must have burned her nose here. It smelled terrible. I was already certain, but I continued anyway. I brought the flame closer to her eye. Her eyelid didn't move one bit. The flame burned her eyelashes, making it swell awful again. I turned the lighter off and then felt her throat and wrist. I didn't feel any warmth. Yeah, this is something that I was thinking in the last minute. Did she die? I didn't feel a pulse either. There was no way she could pretend to be asleep while being burnt. Even if she could endure the pain, anyone would reflexively move their eyelids if a flame came close to their eyes. But she didn't. I turned the sink water on and aimed the end of a hose at the hag's face. Of, The water pressure wasn't too high, but by squeezing the tip of the hose, I could make it squirt out. The water hit the hag in the face, but there was still no reaction. Shit. You've got to be kidding me. She's dead. The one who has at the center of everything is dead now. 
I knew she wouldn't talk, but I didn't expect her to end up at the dead. I never even thought of kidding her. I walked around the room restlessly. I didn't feel guilty, but instead felt frustrated with what I've done. Come on, I need to calm down. What do we need to be afraid of? Calm down and stay cool. Calm down, stay cool. I could feel my brain starting to calm down, and my emotions cooling down with it. She was my true enemy. It was just that I killed her before confronting her about it. <sighs> well, that's just great. No more clues that we can get out of her, that's for sure, for this chapter. Sooner or later, I would have killed her anyway. She wouldn't have said anything in the first place, so there wasn't really a reason why I should have let her live. I didn't realize that until now, and that was why I got frustrated. <sighs> my revenge for Satoshkun started, with the unexpected death of my grandmother. You have such a strange feeling, like I was wearing sopping wet clothes. I replaced that feeling with anger. I couldn't forgive her. I couldn't forgive the heck for abusing the whole Joe family, including Satoshkun, for so many years. She cornered him psychologically as well as physically. She didn't deserve an easy death from a stun gun. I picked up a whip that was hanging on the wall. The whip was designed to make sure the person on the receiving end got seriously injured. I swung it up and then down. The sound reminded me of when I was a child hitting things with a jump rope. I pretended it was a whip. But like then, I would made a purple mark on the hag's face and reddish black blood started oozing out. I swung it up and then down again. This time, the whip hits her in the head. Her hair flew in the air. I saw a bunch of her hair on the tip of the whip. At the end of the bunch of hair, there was a piece of her skin. Seeing the whip had ripped part of her scalp off. I continued to hit her with the whip. I didn't bother removing the hair beforehand. The tip of the whip was divided into many points, with each point having a fish hook on the end. Those hooks added to the speed of the whip, not only scratched the victim, but tore their skin as well. The axe hair was all messed up and her face was getting bloody. She started to look like a real demon. I stopped the whipping. Not because my arm was tired, but because I couldn't stand the feeling of her hair on the tip touching me every time I swung the whip. I threw the whip at the hack. Breathing heavily, I realized I was covered in her hair. It almost felt like thousands of maggots crawling all over me. I brushed it off violently. <laughs> I put my hands on my knees and exhaled roughly. It was then that I noticed it. I perked up and turned around. There it is. The person who had been watching me since I snuck into the shrine storage. I sensed this person sitting in the tatami room. It enjoyed watching me torture my grandma. An overwhelming emotion started to swallow me up. I tried desperately not to feel it. He was just there. Just like Satoshkun. He was just there. He was extremely uncomfortable to have it just be there. Sokka. 
I smiled boldly. And yet, I could feel my body shivering. Tatari was just my imagination. It couldn't be the curse of Oyashiro sama. The curse couldn't be real. Everything was done by humans. They made everything look like it was a curse. Ma,あんたが見たいってんなら勝手だけどさ。no matter what I said, nothing happened. It was like trying to communicate with an insect. It felt like I was starting as the spider in the middle of its web. And the spider was staring back. <laughs> I turned to the hag in the wheelchair. I couldn't leave her body here forever. If I don't need to make her death known, then it should be quick. And it's best if her body doesn't exist. Not even in this secret underground torture room. I exhaled to try to calm myself down. Oh, I remember now. When I was a little girl, Kasai used to love making me feel scared. He often told me scary stories about various horrible things. I recall this story about the secret torture room of the Sonozaki family. According to the story, there was a well in the torture room for dumping bodies in. Yeah, I get, I got the feeling that that's where this is gonna go. There was a pile of tortured corpses at the bottom of the well, and resentful moans could be heard echoing from there. And about halfway down the well, there was a different tunnel which was a secret passage leading into the distant mountains. That bit was from Mion's telling of the story. It was probably an amalgamation. It was probably an amalgamation of tellings from different battles. The room was supposed to be a huge secret, but everyone got loose lips at a chance to have fun scaring the young successor. Mion? この地下拷問室のどこかに隠し戸があって、外へ出られる秘密の通路があるって話。さっきの音は聞こえてなかった？鬼ババを無地で叩く音。ミオン didn't reply, but I saw her bite her lip. 大丈夫。あんたは叩かない。でもね、あんたが不愉快だと。鬼ババをもっと叩くかもしれない。今度は無知なんかじゃなくて。そ、そこの奥。暗がりにも牢屋があるでしょ。その中。Mion pointed weakly. I walked down to where her finger indicated. A light bulb lit up the cell. It was a lot smaller than the one Mion was in. It was very shallow. And I didn't even need to open the door to see how tiny it was. Of course, there's no well in there. I became angry, assuming that she lied to me. But after considering it, I didn't actually think she would at this point. I opened the door and walked in. I noticed something made me. There was an opening right in the middle of the cell. This opening was naturally disguised. The way the rocks and the shadows were positioned perfectly hid the well. The tip of a rock inside of the cell concealed the entrance. Unless you went in, you would never notice. But it was such a shallow cell that nobody would even think of going in. Besides, the bars allow you to see the inside well enough. The cell is not even a few meters deep, so you only take a glance to see everything. Nobody would think of unlocking the door and walking in but walking in was the only way anyone could find the well. Hmm, alright. Furthermore, there were many cells in this huge cave. Who would think that one of them was hiding a secret well? The inside of the well was dark. I couldn't see anything. But every little noise I made produced echoes. I could tell that this was a very deep well. 
I bought a flashlight from the torch room and shone it down the well. It almost looked more like a vertical tunnel. Obviously, a man-made one at that. There were wedges on the wall, like a ladder, and they looked as if they were inviting me to descend. It's kind of ironic that the secret escape route from an underground torture room ended up being a well that takes you even further down. You had no way of knowing whether it would take you to freedom or to hell. Furthermore, they were the tortured bodies of past victims at the bottom. Who would be able to go down this well without hesitation? Nobody in their right mind could go down this well to look for a secret tunnel, hearing the voices of the dead all the while. ミオンはあの井戸降りたことあるの降りたくもないそれに関しては著しく同感この拷問室の犠牲者たちが放り込まれた井戸になんか好き好んで降りたくはないもんね。I went back to the torture room and then returned to the cave, pushing the wheelchair containing the hag. Mion screamed. しシオンバッチャー落とすけ 落とすんじゃないよ。捨てるんだよ。もう死んでるしね。さっきの拷問で死んだんじゃないよ。多分鬼ババはスタンガンで死んだんだよ。心臓麻痺とかで放置してもいいけど虫が湧くと嫌でし
嘘つき嘘つき嘘つき嘘つきかなかなかな返してサトシ君返してよサトシ君返して返して返して返して I kicked the hag's leg repeatedly. Each time I kicked, the wheelchair made a squeaky noise. I ran out of breath and kneeled down. Neon was still covering her ears, and it was now shaking. There were tears in her eyes. ミオンはいじめないからね。安心して。でも、もしミオンも嘘をついていたなら仕方ない。その時は、どういう目に遭わされても、仕方ない。仕方ないよね。<笑><笑>はい。But that's not true. It's actually more like a system of government. Several ministries stem from the main family, and each forms a hierarchy of its own. These ministries don't communicate with one another. The people who belong to a given ministry don't know what other ministries are doing. That way, the Sonazaki family's dealings are kept perfectly secret. Of course, the most important people in the family govern several ministries. They know, of course, about their own ministries. And they know a little bit about the ministries they re their relatives run. But none of them know everything. There are ministries that work in the open, there are ministries that work unseen, and there are some small ones that Oreo runs herself. Mion seems to know about most of them, but she doesn't necessarily know them all. In fact, she didn't know about the curse. Considering that, The fact that the hag died before I could interrogate her is a huge loss. True. Couldn't get much out of、uh, audio in this. Alright, well, the next page. The head of the Kishimashi family was the one who called the main house most often after the fifth year's curse. My father called the second most. My parents were still high in the hierarchy, but the stir caused by my mother's disownment still hung over us. So I got treated as outcasts. I mean, you know, now that I'm thinking about this and the、uh, events of chapter 2, I guess it makes sense now that, like, we knew from chapter 2 that Kimiyoshi disappeared. And, well, now we know the reason for it. Shion did think that, well, that he knew of some stuff. So she took him in as well to interrogate him. And then afterwards, we had Satoko and Rika. Hmm. Now that, in, now that I'm thinking about it, even Rika's disappearance actually makes sense. She had to be interrogated as well by Shion. That's why she disappeared in chapter 2 as well. I guess so. So, the fact that my father received so many calls proved how much the hag valued us, despite the distance at which we were kept, demonstrating her own two faced respect for both sides of the coin. My father seems to be in charge of the Intelligence Bureau. He reported police information, gossip, and rumors going around in the Yakuza business to the hag. He silences, stirs, and distorts that information at a request. By the way, my servant Kasai is an old friend of my father's. 
That must be why Kasai knows many things. But I don't know if my father is involved in the curse's execution. My assumption is that although he got any information on the police investigation about the case, he wasn't involved in the execution itself. And the fact that my father and the hag have this close connection isn't widely known. People know that she uses his, inf his information network, but they don't look very far beyond that. In the same way, it's possible that a cursed execution team exists under the hack's direct control. People just aren't aware of it.